I think my profession is, is uh, probably rabble rouser, activist, truth teller, somebody who's trying to make the country better. I bet it's genius. <laughs>other kids had like football you know players on their walls I had like you know political uh, figures on my wall even as a kid in the 1970s when my dad was a public school principal every day was a civil rights struggle he went to school board working with parents who weren't used to having an african-american authority figure over their children and so I saw the really day-to-day -day unfolding of, of, of a desegregation process through my whole childhood so when I got old enough to want to go out in the world I wanted to be a part of making those changes go forward when I got to Yale for law school, I was shocked to see undergraduates using drugs and to see them, when they got in trouble, they were going into rehab. And yet, two blocks away, I was seeing poor kids in the housing projects using those same drugs going to prison. I just couldn't understand how two uh, groups of kids, same age, same city, blocks away from each other, could do the same thing, and some kids go to rehab and get a chance to graduate from a school like Yale and the other kids go to prison. I spent many years in Oakland, uh, working in some of the toughest communities in the country, really. And I did everything I could to uh, bring some justice and some peace and some opportunity to those neighborhoods. It felt like it was a losing battle. You get a victory, and it would, by the time you got that victory, so many other bad things had happened that you just felt like you were in a hamster wheel. And I burned out. And I needed to get just my own health together, my own mind together. So I started going to these retreat centers, which are you know, ubiquitous in Northern California, but just none in Oakland. I discovered yoga, I discovered organic food, I discovered solar panels. All this amazing stuff was happening right over there in Marin County. And then I have to get in my car and I drive back over the bridge to Oakland. And you're going from uh, the, the ecological halves who have the hybrid cars, who've got the solar panels, who've got the organic food, who've got the yoga studios, to the ecological have-nots, who have the asthma inhalers in their pockets, who've got the cancer clusters, who've got the, uh, the port with all the pollution, who've got uh, very few jobs. And there was a moment on that bridge, I said, you know what? We need green jobs, not jails, for these young people in Oakland. We could fight pollution and poverty at the same time. If we took those young people who most need the work and let them do the work that most needs to be done, repowering America, putting up those solar panels, growing that organic food, we can make a huge difference in two problems with one solution. It was a true epiphany. Those four syllables, green jobs, not jails, took over my whole life. In America alone, United States, we have a Saudi Arabia of wind energy that we have not yet tapped. 8,000 finely machined parts in each wind turbine. That's a car. You can put your auto makers back to work, your steel workers back to work, and tap all of that wind potential, and then begin to run America on clean energy. And the great thing about that is, if you have some disaster and a wind platform tips over, you don't have a massive wind slick that comes and you know, messes up the coastline. So you've got a better, smarter way to uh, respect the earth, but also respect the people. Good for business, good for labor, good for environmentalists, good for poor kids who want to get their foot on the ladder of opportunity, all based on that one moment on that bridge. That's the power of an epiphany.